Do you get anxious talking to girls? Does real life sex not really do it for you? Are you lasting way too long with your partner? Are you uninterested and or underwhelmed with real life? Maybe you're under 40 and have been diagnosed with some sort of erectile dysfunction or some form of clinical depression or social anxiety. Hello, I'm Only Jax, and with No Nut November upon us, I wanted to talk about something that I feel pretty strongly about. Online is making you retire physically, mentally, and socially, as well as messing with you in some other ways. If you give me a little more than half an hour, I want to break all of this down for you in a shame-free and hopefully uplifting way. This is a problem that can affect anyone, and if you're watching this video, it probably affects you too. Some people in Australia did a study back in 2017 where they asked 1,000 people aged 15 to 29 some questions about if they've ever viewed how often they viewed etc. They found that out of the 257 men who participated, 100% of them, unsurprisingly, had viewed in their lifetime. They also found that out of the 683 women who participated, 82% of them had viewed sometime in their life. And I mean, that's whatever. As you age, just kind of seems to be everywhere, so none of this is really shocking. The part that was unfortunately unsurprising to me was that out of the 100% of men who had viewed in their lifetime, 69% of them had first seen it at age 13 or younger. The girls were, I guess, a little bit better, with only 23% of them having viewed that young. Despite this small sample size, I'm going to bet that this data is pretty accurate across the board anywhere high-speed internet is available. I also don't think it would be a stretch to say that these numbers, if compared to right now at this moment, are a lot lower than reality. Suffice it to say that seems to be a staple of the Western lifestyle. If you have internet, you have meaning that well, this affects everybody. I know I sound like I'm fear mongering. Oh God, they're coming after the children. Lock up your kids, cut down the internet, hide your wives, do 10 Hail Marys for every scene you've watched. But it's really not that scary. It's just fucking everywhere. Now I wanna clarify, when I say as it relates to this video, I'm talking about internet the hub, OnlyFans, cam to cam services, at the touch of a button. I'm not talking about dirty magazines, DVDs, VHSs, cave paintings, smut books for girls, ancient erotica, none of that. I feel this distinction needs to be made because I've heard many people online say that has been around forever, and that's true, but I'd argue that that's more than a little dishonest to lump pre-internet in with post-internet as they are similar, yes, but they're not the same. It's a lot like lumping a bow and arrow with an AR-15. Yes, they serve the same purpose, they both launch a projectile, but the effectiveness and the capabilities of the two are wildly different. You've been told that is normal, a good thing, a great way for self-discovery. You believe these things because the other option would be to accept shame and believe that you're weird. Or at least that's how it seems. Listen, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend as if for decades, churches, religiously run organizations, and their volunteers haven't perpetuated this shameful feeling when it comes to They have. It sucks. And I wish they hadn't. I wish my parents hadn't treated me like I was some sort of disgusting sexual deviant freak when they caught me the first time, or the second time, or the third time. But such is life. We move on from these things. Or we don't, and instead we fully throw ourselves into what we perceive as being shameful, with a big middle finger pointing behind us at those who made us feel like that. Or we don't do that either, instead opting to do the shameful thing in secret behind closed doors, wondering why, oh why, am I like this? as we go deeper and deeper. Regardless, there's a lot of shame when vocal anti people talk, and uh, I've personally never known shame to be a particularly great motivator for change or rethinking something. Think of it. Shame is when you perceive that you are the problem or that you aren't good enough. So what sense does it make that shame would motivate someone to change? They're obviously not good enough to change, so why bother? Instead, shame seems to be really good at inspiring people to justify whatever it was that you said was shameful, or to prove that whatever it it is, isn't shameful. That's how you get to where we are today. In one ear, you've got some jacked gym bro yelling at you saying, Ew, how could you ever really be into this thing? You must be the biggest idiot to like this stuff. Don't you realize how bad this is for you? And then in the other ear, you've got the bread tubers reminding you how normal it is. Everyone does it and telling you to be sex positive. When in reality, both of these people are the problem. The former is just straight up shaming you into feeling like garbage, and the latter is just feeding you garbage. It seems to me that we believe the garbage because on the surface, it kind of makes 
make sense. Yeah, how else am I supposed to know what I'm into? It's nice to rub one out and relieve some stress. I'm not hurting anybody. Sure, but at a deeper level, it just feels so much fucking better than feeling ashamed. And I don't blame you for believing this. I did for forever for this exact same reason. So let me set something straight before we get into the shit. You are not weird. You are not gross. You are not guilty of some horrible, weird degeneracy. I'd probably go so far as to say that you may be a victim of well-intended people doing their best to lift everyone up. I don't think that the majority of people telling you that p is normal are trying to keep you down or feed you some evil liberal agenda. Porn makes you feel good for a time. It's generally used in private and so at the surface, it doesn't seem so bad. I get it. Enough of that. Let's get into why you came here. It directly impacts how your prefrontal cortex and how your brain's reward system works, much like an addiction to an illicit substance. Okay, so I'm not much of a scientist or a professor, so I may lose you while describing how all this works, so just stay with me. Watching and triggers your brain to release dopamine. Now, dopamine is known online to be the pleasure or happy chemical in your brain. And that's only half the story with dopamine. The book Your Brain on P describes dopamine as the sense of pleasure you get from seeking out a solution or the journey of completing a task. Think of the pleasure of dopamine like the pleasure you get of getting in your car and driving to 7-Eleven to try the new Oreo flavored Coke. Now, when you've completed the task or found the solution, your brain releases endogenous opioids, kind of like fentanyl that your body makes, that create this immense sense of pleasure from having done something. Think of the opioids as the ah, moment after taking the first sip of Oreo Coke. Or to put it into context, dopamine is released while you're scrolling through the hub, finding a scene, and then gooning. The opioids in your brain are released at climax, giving you that crazy sense of pleasure. This is how your brain's reward system works pretty much. Dopamine to motivate you to achieve the task, opioids to congratulate you. A really cool thing your brain does during this process is it releases a protein called delta Fos B. As I understand it, this protein regulates the reward system and actively helps build new neural pathways. It works like this. When dopamine is released, so is delta Fos B. The dopamine tells delta Fos B, hey, whatever it is that we're doing right now is freaking sweet and we should definitely do this again. The delta Fos B says, you're so right, and gets to work building pathways to help you remember and want to do this activity again. This this can be seen with people who go to the gym a few times and then get absolutely hooked. The dopamine from the lift tells the Delta Foss B that they should do this all the time. The Delta Foss B says, hell yeah, and gets to work rewiring your brain to crave the lift. This process is called sensitization. You become more sensitive to the specific way of achieving your reward. The downside of this is that the reward system can't tell if something is good for you or bad for you. If dopamine is released, then dopamine is released and the Delta Foss B gets to work making you crave whatever it was that released the dopamine in the first place. No worries though, because high levels of dopamine along with Delta Foss B also trigger the release of another cool molecule called CREB. I'm going to call it CREB for this video. Think of CREB like a timeout molecule. If you're gorging on the never ending possible at Olive Garden, enjoying the dopamine response and filling up, CREB is responsible for dampening the pleasure response from stuffing our face by inhibiting dopamine. Dopamine says, hey, this is awesome. Delta Foss B reminds you how awesome it is, C-Reb tells you to stop when you've had enough. The problem with this system though is that it was designed hundreds of thousands of years before the Olive Garden. And so yeah, you'll grow a tolerance to the carbonara, becoming desensitized to it, but Olive Garden has several other pastas to choose from. All you need to do to override the C-Reb is to move on to something new. So now let's think of this in the context of You hop on the hub, you're scrolling through videos looking for the perfect scene while the dopamine levels in your brain increase. You pick one and you start beating your meat. The dopamine mean is telling the Delta Foss B how great this is and we should remember to do it. You nut and you get that big rush of opioids to congratulate you on a job well done. A few nights later, that new neural pathway that's starting to form reminds you of how great it was when you watched that girl do that thing she did on that guy, so you hop back on the hub, go straight to that scene and again, amazing. 10 out of 10. And this happens again and somehow it's even better because your brain has been sensitized to this dopamine response thanks to the Delta Foss B. You come back to it again and... Huh. This scene doesn't hit like it did the last time, or the time before that. That's the C-Reb. That's tolerance. If you were a crack user, well, then you could solve for this by, well, more crack. But you're not. You're a p user. It's a bit easier than that. You figure that this scene isn't really doing it for you anymore, so you move on to one with a different model, and boom, you're back in the game. This happens over and over, and eventually, a guy and a girl hooking up on the screen doesn't do anything anymore. You've built up a tolerance to the normal stuff, and so now, to get you off, you're looking at a 12-on-1 interracial gangbang 
bang to maybe get you to finish. More on this later, but you get how it works. What makes so dangerous and what makes you so retarded is that is fucking everywhere. And there doesn't seem to be any limit to the stuff that you can see. There's no natural limit. There's no real breaking point. There's something new every day so your tolerance mechanism doesn't get a chance to pull you out of it. It's the perfect drug kind of when you think about it. As well as, while you get more sensitized and primed to crave the outside world and your natural rewards don't hit nearly as hard. Frequent use wires you up to want the porn and the climax that's associated with it. You get the same rush of dopamine every time you go looking for a new scene as the first time because, again, you're sensitized to it. You know what you might not be sensitized to? Talking to the girl you saw across the bar. Actually, here's the fucky thing. The stress and anxiety that you feel when you think about talking to that girl can actually trigger your sensitized addiction pathways that cause you to crave taking you out of the game entirely now. If you're not paying attention, you may have just missed how this is the process that makes you retarded. Let me give you another example. You visit the hub and crank one out nightly. Today, you've got the day off, and so you think, maybe I'll hop on the dating apps and see if I can score for real. You get to swiping, and lucky you, you've got a match. You don't get very many matches, so this is a little nerve-wracking, and you get a little anxious about what to say. I mean, the goal is to get her to your bed as quickly as possible. Oops, someone sensitized pathway triggered. Now it's all you're thinking about, and you start to get frustrated frustrated that you can't think of the right words to say to start this chat. The frustration tickles that pathway even more. You reach a point where the cravings for regardless of whether or not you realize that's what's happening, grow to a breaking point. You say to the girl, hey, and then hop on the hub and crank one out. After an hour, because they always fucking take that long to reply, she responds, hey, but she caught you during post nut clarity and you're realizing now that you're never gonna raise a family with this woman, so it's not worth keeping up this convo. You blame her for not giving you anything to work with, but in reality, you were the retard who opened up a conversation with, hey, and then went to crank one out instead of, I don't know, starting a conversation with literally anything else. You may have heard how this process works before if you've ever learned about substance addiction or been to rehab. Unlike what one bad faith neuroscientist and at least a few bread tubers will tell you, addiction and substance addiction work much the same. This addiction and reward process is the same for everyone, but it works to varying degrees depending on how long you've been doing it and what age you started. Adolescent brains are primed to learn and absorb information, a lot like monkey see, monkey do. These monkeys are seeing I said in the intro how young men and women are being exposed to material before the age of 13. I want to remind you of this because this age group is very special. This is around the age where a magical thing called puberty starts. Well, it's been documented starting even earlier in some Western countries, but that's a topic for a whole nother video. During this time in your life, 13 to around 24, your brain is, as you know, primed to learn. Your ape brain specifically is given the job of learning everything it can about sex. Whether you're thinking about it or not, during this time, your brain is noticing and putting together cues and behaviors that will hopefully lead you to sex with a partner in an effort to carry on your genes into the future. On paper, this is great. Traditionally, young men watching their fathers take care and provide for their mothers wire together that this is how to attract and, more importantly, keep a woman in their life and start a family with. Young women traditionally see how nurturing and supportive their mothers are to their fathers, while also seeing how her father provides and takes care of them, wiring what to look for and how they should be treated by their future partner. Obviously, this is a simplified example, but that doesn't mean this isn't a exactly how it used to work. Every day, I feel like I'm more and more becoming my dad, and I'd be hard-pressed to find another guy my age who doesn't think like this, provided that his dad was around. But porn offers a different way for children to learn and wire together signals, cues, and behaviors about sex. Instead of learning how to be an attractive partner through your family, school, or eventually out in the real world, it just gives you sex, without any of the mental and or emotional growth that you would normally pick up without it. So what can, and likely does, happen, rather than being hyper-aware of the traditional traditional, in-person, learned-by-experience cues and behaviors, your brain learns pretty quick that sexual gratification and ape brain validation is as easy as picking up your smartphone or sitting at your computer, pulling up any one of the millions of clips online, and then cranking one out. Do it a few times, and then you may pick up what some would call a habit. Keeping this habit up can, more likely than not, I would imagine, lead to the dreaded addiction. The reason this is considerably more dangerous for the youth is that, as you age, your brain has this natural sculpting process that it does start 
starting around age 12. This is your brain's use it or lose it principle in action. The habits and behaviors you learn during this age period grow very strong, very frequently used neural connections while billions of other connections get trimmed and reorganized by your brain. All of this to say that people the most in danger of becoming retarded due to porn use are children and adolescents. Their dumb little monkey brains are the most moldable and impressionable and so I would recommend keeping them away at all costs. This doesn't sound like a crazy stance to have, but with the increasing availability of internet access and with that adult content to kids these days, it's something to think about. If you're in this age group and watching this video, then take this as a warning and take it seriously. People my age are the guinea pigs for this online experiment and take it from me, it's only getting worse from here. You can stop it now. Your erectile dysfunction, your dissatisfaction with your sex life, and your inability to finish can be directly linked to the fact that you're a habitual p user. Story time. A younger only Jax dated this girl once, and on their first date, they hooked up. They hooked up for a while, actually, and young only Jax didn't complete the mission. Young only Jax was getting kind of tired of the pump, but thankfully he had a condom on, and you all should have condoms on, by the way, and so he was able to fake like he had completed the mission. Quickly, before she could see, he snapped the condom off and threw it away, as to not arouse suspicion that he had faked it. We then were together for a few months and tried to make it work for a few more. It ended ugly, but that was for the best. I learned a lot. Throughout our relationship, I opened up about how, for whatever reason, I couldn't finish. I looked up online for hours trying to figure out what was wrong with me. I knew the whole time, of course, I just didn't want to be proven correct. A few websites told me to focus on temperature, touch, and time, and it, it didn't work. A few websites said to start switching things up, but she was out of shape, I was out of shape, so that really wasn't going to work out. I swore up and down that it wasn't her fault that I wouldn't finish. The attraction was there, the romance was there, on paper everything was perfect. So I finally got real with myself and I decided I'm going to stop watching it was an instant, but a few weeks later, I'm shooting webs like I'm Spider-Man. Things are going great. She was happy, and I was happy. Until one of the many other problems that we were destined to face came up, and she stopped coming around as often. Idle hands are the devil's plaything, so since she wasn't around, and at the time, I wasn't working, back to and I went. And then, again, back to never finishing. We didn't make it long after that. This is just one of the many examples of physical retardation caused by porn use. I would say excessive porn use, but in my experience, one session is enough to undo weeks of work and abstinence. That was my problem. Other guys experience the opposite problem where real life sex and the lack of novelty that comes with it just leaves them softer than is necessary to perform correctly. Some guys have trouble getting it up at all. It doesn't stop there though. The anxiety and the stress of these problems start to really fill your head with fear and insecurity, which can keep you from climax or soften you up. That then leads to more stress, more anxiety, more fear, more insecurity, and eventually you either fake it like me or you say, hey baby, that was fantastic but let's both call it for the night. Both of you being done unsatisfied, if not just with your bodies, then in your mind. I get pretty heated about this part of the retard because it's the part that I struggled with the most. You can't ignore the reward system part of this video because this is how the addiction manifests outside of your own mind. A lot of people like to portray porn use as this private thing that really only affects the user, but that's just not true for anyone with a partner or looking for a partner. It all has to do with the conditioning. While you're watching porn, you're conditioning yourself to find the things associated with it arousing, triggering that reward system. Some examples would be your empty bed, being able to see both sexual participants at the same time, the way your phone feels in your hand while you're watching, the feeling of no one else being home. These are the things that you're conditioned to start being aroused by, and these are the things that start to trigger your reward system, drawing you to p But those things aren't what sex is. Sex isn't your empty bed. Ideally, there's at least one other person with you. It isn't your phone being held lambscape by your left hand. Ideally, your phone would be out of the way. Nor is it being able to see both sexual participants at the same time, as you're really only able to see it from a POV perspective, unless you've got a mirror, in which case, <laughs> That's pretty sweet. Sex is touching, it's kissing, it's the feeling of shared experience. It's smelly sometimes. Unfortunately, you're not wired for that, and so, in turn, the idea turns you on, but the act just doesn't cut it. Some guys don't nut at all. Some guys nut while they're soft because that's how they do it when they're cranking it. Some guys don't even get hard. This is making you physically retarded. You can look up nofap reddit or other forums and just read on and on and on about how guys, and some girls too, struggle with some form of physical retardation due to their use. Some of them experience a bit of a flat line when they give up the stuff, meaning that they, for a brief time, experience loss of libido, but after that hump, it's like a complete turnaround. Hard like a diamond and ropes like Spider-Man. Because the same 
loses appeal over time, you're liable to seek out new and novel scenes, fetish material, kinks that you otherwise wouldn't have been into. You may morally, ethically, or just generally disagree with these things, but they are new, they are exciting, and now they turn you on. I briefly talked earlier about how the same old scene gets boring after a while, and so you upgrade to a new scene with a bustier model with a guy with a bigger peen. Maybe he slaps her around a little bit. If you're like me, then the thought of hitting a lady during such an intimate time, or any time for that matter, just seems so foreign and weird. And listen, I'm not about to kink shame or anything, but in the same breath, I'm not about to say that people shitting on other people is something normal and falls under like the, hey, you like what you like way of thinking. But this is how it works. You get bored with the same old stuff. It's not new anymore. You still get to climax, but you're left with wanting that dopamine rush again. So watching her get smacked around leads to watching her all tied up and getting smacked around leads to watching simulated great. Okay, mine never got that bad, but look at the nofap boards or read the self reports from your brain on com and you'll find that this chain of events isn't uncommon at all. Furthermore, you'll find that these guys, after quitting the hub, realized that watching two girls vomit on each other wasn't ever something that aroused them at all. It was just new and extreme and triggered that dopamine response. They regained their disgust mechanism. You know, that thing that's supposed to keep you from playing around with actual shit. What is really fun to think about is how some people will tell you and believe that watching is a great way to figure out what you like and what you're into, which on the surface makes sense, but knowing what we know now about in your reward system and how makes you retarded, it's not so simple because yes, you're going to be exposed to things on the hub that maybe you wouldn't get to experience in real life for the first time, but like we've seen, those things get boring after a while and you move on, and then you move on again. Let's say you used to really be into the vanilla stuff, then after a while you saw some porn and now you're kind of into choking, and then those scenes got a little stale and now you're hooked on ball gags and rope. Let me ask you then, are you really into ball gags and being hogtied because you're into ball gags and being hogtied? Or does it make more sense that you watch so much normal stuff that this new, weird, exciting one is what's got your attention right now? I'm not saying that people aren't just into what they're into. Everyone is unique in their own special way. What I am saying is that the extreme stuff that you're into that doesn't really align with who you are as a person, that stuff is probably a manifestation of what I'm talking about. It all comes back to conditioning. Over time, desensitization of the vanilla stuff led you to the extreme stuff and in the process, conditioning yourself to like it. So before you get down on yourself thinking, why oh why am I sexually aroused by the guy choking the girl while she pees all over another guy, take a break from the point for a month, maybe a little longer. What no fappers, men and women tend to find is that the longer they're away from whatever fetish they thought they were into, the less they are actually into it. Many people report back that they have no clue as to why they were ever into it in the first place. It's really not your fault either. The people running the hub sites know exactly that this is how all of this works and are exploiting it to keep you hooked. You keep watching, they roll in the cash. It's all really simple when you think about it. I think I feel so strongly about this because I'm one of the people affected by this. Nice guys finish last, but p addicts don't finish at all. Unless, of course, they're in their bed alone with one hand on their willy and the other one holding their smartphone. This phenomenon is a lot more common than you think. r slash nofap on Reddit has more than 1.2 million members. The nofap forums have over 300,000 members, and those are just the people who've sought help for their problem. I would imagine that there are many, many more people who were just like I was, who were having problems related to but aren't willing to accept that that's where their problem lies. Honestly, I would go so far as to say that if you're a Gen Z living in a Western country and not actively working to limit or eliminate your consumption, you're in the affected group. It's not something that everyone is willing to talk about. It's not something that a lot of people online want to even admit is real. There's one neuroscientist named Nicole. I won't say the rest of her name because she's been known to like false flag people for YouTube videos talking about it. So I'll just her name is Nicole, but she claims that porn addiction isn't even real, despite the recent science that points to porn addiction being as real and following the same addictive process as drugs like cocaine and meth. I'll leave this section with this. You are not alone. You are not unique and you are not special when it comes to this subject. The people who might make fun of you or try to convince you that you're crazy for wanting to unporn yourself are just wrong and or ignorant. The way I see it, we were all duped into thinking that porn is healthy and normal by people who were just trying their best and didn't know any better. But the experiment is over now. We know that porn is making us retarded.
Thankfully, all of this is reversible. It's scary though, because it could take a month, two months, two years, or more to see a full reversal, but it will happen. The obvious answer is to just abstain from easier to say, less easy to do. Sites like nofap.com offer a free guide on rebooting and ending your addiction. I highly recommend you take a look over there because this video is already far too long. The only Jack's advice is simply put, stop watching, stop gooning. If you're in a relationship, this can be easier and you both can even take part. Think about rewiring your brains together, how romantic that would be. Avoid the loud guys on TikTok who try to sell you some course on not watching. All of the resources you need can be found for free on r slash nofap, nofap.com, yourbrainon.com, and I'm sure there's more. Uh, in closing, this is the closing part of the video where I'm kind of going to go um, off script. I'm not using my teleprompter for this. Uh, sucks, dude. I mean, at first it seems great. Um, at this point in my no part, um, at this point in my no my no fap, my, uh, no material journey. I'm like, I'm like two or three months in, uh, which is great because I, I have the opposite of a problem that I had when, uh, I was talking earlier in the video where I had a problem where I would last too long. Now I'm having the opposite of that problem. And let me tell you from a guy who's never finished to a guy now who's finishing a little too fast. It is way better to have the too fast problem because you can stop and start. You can like, you know, kind of like edge your way into it um, with a partner. And that's way better than never getting gratified at all. So just putting that out right now, if your problem is that you're not finishing, but like you're like thinking in your head, like, oh man, like this is perfect because at least I don't finish fast. Get that out of your head. Finishing fast is way better and way more manageable because at the end of the day, she feels happy that, hey, like she was good enough. And like the, the time, the time you shared was good enough to get you to finish and you get to finish, which is way fucking better. But um, I feel really strongly about this because um, I don't know if you can tell, but I am a man. And so men's issues, uh, like they, like, I, I, I like to think that we're trying to like to tackle men's issues and like meeting men where they're at. Um, I've done therapy. I've done a whole bunch of stuff. And like therapy was originally designed for women. And I think that that uh, like mentality has kind of like kept through therapy can help a lot of guys, but it took me quite a few therapists have found one that clicked with me. And I, I completely understand why guys will say, oh, therapy doesn't work for me. It will. You just kind of have to shop around until you find one who's speaking your language. Uh, Cause at, at its core, it wasn't really designed for you. So uh, anytime I I'm under the impression, like anytime it works, it's because the therapist took extra time to design it for you specifically. So these are the kind of things as far as men's issues are concerned. Um, I really don't think that uh, a lot of stuff in the, present day is designed to meet men where they're at. So, uh, as far as not watching, uh, I, for the most part, it is a men's issue. It does affect women as well. Um, if you don't have the book, your brain on, I highly recommend that you get it. It spells it out in a very, it spells all of these things out. And most of the information I got for this video was found in that book, but it spells everything out in a very easy to understand way and in a shame free type way, because what happens with a lot of people like, you know, everyone grows up, you know, with like that, your school or your church or, you know, <coughs> like someone way older than you going, Oh my God, they're so shameful. You're a deviant. If you do it, like this is, this is a sin. You're going to go to hell and forget all of that. It's not a good motivator. Fear is never a great motivator. Shame is never a great motivator. Maybe fear can be a good motivator. I'm not sure, but it's never, it's never great. Um, and so if someone were, if someone had told me when I was in high school, this is how p makes you retarded in this way, I probably wouldn't have had a b as big of an issue with it as I did. Um, I'm sure the issue would have been there because I probably, I mean, I was in high school, so I probably wasn't looking for a reason to stop watching, p but it's a whole thing. Young men are lonelier. Young men are watching more. P young men are more likely now to not talk to young women. And this is an issue because declining birth rates, we're not meeting there's a bunch of stuff. There are a million reasons that people shouldn't be watching. And I've laid out like four or five here. Um, but it was very, it was a lot of fun doing the research for this video. Um, I hope this video is received positively. Um, uh, and that's really all I can say. Um, if you're having an issue with this and you are man enough to admit it, uh, I'm very proud of you. Uh, the, the path is not easy. The steps are easy, but walking them, not so much. 
So uh, if you need help, please do refer to the resources that are listed. You've got r slash nofap. You've got uh, nofap.com, yourbrainonporn.com. I'm sure there's a million more. Um, if you, it'll, if you find it useful for you, uh, talk to a therapist, uh, but, but, but be wary. A lot of therapists these days are under the impression that addiction isn't real and it isn't harmful, but it is. So just shop around until you find a therapist that agrees with you on that. And they'll be more than willing to help you out. Sorry, I've got a cat taking a shit and they like to scratch the walls. Um, talk to your church, talk to a pastor. Even if you're religious, like preface anything with like, like if you come to it with a, uh, you know, understanding that this is something you want to change, I would be hard pressed to find anyone who's going to shame you for that rather than being, you know, very happy, grateful, and very willing to help you out with this problem, knowing that this is something you want to fix. So, uh, with that, I've been only Jax and, uh, stop watching. You made it to the end of the video. You should subscribe or maybe just leave a like, leave a comment if you please. But I'd rather you subscribe I check that shit like every day And when that subscriber number goes up Well, my heart goes up to the sky When you do subscribe